Welcome to the mobile home movement where we showcase the beauty and affordability of mobile homes. Here we break false myths and share all the positive stories of how mobile home ownership transforms lives. I'm Franco Perez and this is the mobile home movement. What's up guys? We are today on the Mobile Home Movement Podcast and we have a special guest today. We have Viv here. Viv has been with us for exactly a year and I'm excited to kind of elaborate on her journey and her story and and where she's at now and, and what she's up to now. So thanks for being here, Viv. Excited to have you. Of course. Excited to be here. So, uh, so tell me, I'm just adjusting the volume a little bit here, but tell me, Kind of, first off, who's Viv? What did you do before you worked with us? What's kind of, um, what was your experience, your story, and what got you to starting with us before starting to uh, talk about your work here? Yeah, so my story is um, back during COVID, I spent a lot of time thinking about what I wanted to do in the future, um, what businesses I wanted to run, things like that. I think I was around 15 at the time. And I looked into real estate and I just decided, yes, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. So after looking into it, I got started pretty early, joined a team when I was 17, spent lots of time cold calling, shadowing real estate agents, things like that. Spent a lot of time learning. And then for two, three years or so, until um, I found Franco and his team. Um, but before that, I was, before mobile homes, I was working with residential agents mostly. And something that I kind of learned in the process of working with them is um, I didn't have this big connect with the clients. So a lot of these clients that I'm helping purchase multi-million dollar homes, it was kind of hard to relate to them in the sense that, you know, I came from a lot more humble backgrounds growing up in a mobile home myself. Mm -hmm. um, so I realized, it made me feel like real estate wasn't going to be my thing. I had struggles with um, continuing to, you know, go to work every day and feel motivated to do so. And actually how I found Franco and Franco Mobile Homes was, um, I was on TikTok and I saw a random TikTok. It was about a factory tour or something like that. Oh, cool. That was the first time I've ever seen anything relating to mobile homes or viewing mobile homes as a cool or positive, interesting thing. So I, I followed I followed you. And then later on, I saw um, a job posting. So I was like, hey, I didn't know you were located um, in the Bay Area as well. So I just went ahead and applied. And oh, <laughs> now <cool>. here I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So that's good that you really had that. It's quite fascinating, guys, because I think it, it, it gives me goosebumps because like it reminds me, and I think we can elaborate more on your story too, or, or we don't need to, but you know, you worked at a very young age. I know, you know, you, you have to take care of your family and, and that's why you had to work. And you started real estate at 17 years old. Um, you know, most people at 17 or even 19, 20 don't even have good work experience, but basically got the experience of communication of sales. Uh, you know, there's, you did cold calling, you did door knocking. What was that learning? Like, what was, what was it coming from who you were as a 16, 17 year old? What got you motivated to wanting to try this out? And then what did you learn from the sales element and the communication element? What did you learn about people? Yeah. So definitely, um, something that stuck with me a long time ago is I used to be obsessed with there was this app called Wish or it's still really popular right now where people sell or it's a website that sells really cheap things right mm -hmm. and so it wasn't really popular back then it just the app was just created so I bought a few things for and those people it's kind of like the older timu and she mm -hmm. yeah, like <laughs> aliexpress yeah or i think it's sponsored by nba sponsored by the nba now or something like that yeah. but it's pretty big now but anyways i bought a few things 
brought it to school and a lot of parents were asking me about like my watch or things like that and I just like went on off on a tangent about this app I was like you can buy anything it's hella cheap and they were like wow you really sold that to me you should really get into real estate or sales when you're older and I think I was 11 at the time but that really stuck with me for some reason (laughs) and it just gave me this confidence that if other people think that you know if other people feel that way then it must be true so when i started in real estate or cold calling um even though it's really scary to get rejected by clients and things like that um, i just had this motivation like or manifestation of i i can do anything even if it's scary i'll get over it yeah so I really took that into uh, consideration and also being surrounded by people that are um, working towards the same goal as me helped a lot too. Wow. So being surrounded by people that are also cold calling, also doing something that's so scary makes it really motivating because we're all on the same page. Yeah. And, yeah. So, and on that first part too, I think there's a lot of also negative con. Man, my words. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot, of, a lot of negative associations with sales, but I yeah. think you know from being at eleven it, and and that wish conversation that you had, you were selling not for any negative intent, not for manipulation and that type of thing. I, I feel like sales is often is related. People associate with that, but what's cool and what's natural there that what happened is that. You genuinely believe in this product that you can get cheap stuff, look cool, buy fancy things for cheap. And that's what got you inside your young minded instincts to sell. Right. And what's beautiful now, it's like, hey, you're using that in the problem solving. What you learn from there is like, hey, you're renting. And we'll get into this later, but we understand that most people are renting and they can't buy single family homes and mobile homes might be the answer. Now, it's that same thing within our team. It's that natural instinct. We see it happen. We see the success. And, you know, that instinct from you being 11 is the same instincts that we have now. And selling isn't always a bad thing. We we push it because we believe in it and Mm -hmm. we know that it's changing families' lives. And I think to add on to that is like selling isn't a terrible thing, especially when you really believe in the product and you can see how much it can help people. So like same thing when I was 11, I thought, um, you know, this app is really cool. You can buy things really cheap. Um, You don't have to spend a lot of money. Same thing with mobile homes now. Like um, I'm actually really passionate about mobile homes because of how much it does how much it can help families, things like that. So that's why I push it so much too. Yeah. 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 So I want to, we'll definitely touch again on that. Mm -hmm. Um, But let's go through like, I, the co- like I know a lot of young people out there are super shy, super yes. shy. You know, like the song? <laughs> Jeans. <laughs> so they're shy or unconfident or feel like they can't communicate well, mm-hmm. right? So, and what I realize is going through the grit of having whether it's phones dot phones um, hung up on you, doors shut on, in your face. And then going through that pain and understanding that life's going to be okay, yes. right? That gets you that, that builds you that confidence, yeah. right? So what was it like cold calling and door knocking? Yeah. And what did you learn that made the difference in, in improving your communication? Yeah, so with cold calling, it's it's hard because you don't when you start, you don't have a lot of experience in real estate. You don't know the questions that are going to come up. Come up. Right. So you can do a lot of um, role playing. You can do a lot of like thinking of what questions might come up and writing those down. But you won't use any of that until you're actually in the conversation with the per- the real person on the line. Right. You can role play with your team members and things like that. But once you get into an actual flow of a conversation is when you can learn how to say things, how to bring up questions, how to um what f- what questions you should ask f- first, like the order of things, right? So I realized that I can spend a lot of time role-playing with my team members, but I won't be able to say that I have the experience of calling or talking to clients, which made me feel like imposter syndrome. Like I'm not going to try to tell people I do real estate when, you know, I haven't been talking to clients. I haven't been, you know, putting putting myself out there like that. So my experience with that was I started off very shy at first. 
I have this problem where I do talk really quietly to this day, and people made that known to me. <laughs> <laughs> like me. So, yes, and even <laughs> pe- people on the phone, my mentors at the time, I, they made it really known to me, which really helped me, push me, get me out of my comfort zone because I've always been scared of being being too loud or even though I'm not loud at all. <laughs> mm-hmm. So learn, getting through that learning was really good. And then with door knocking, there is the same thing, but now you're face to face with them. So it is, it, in a way it can be scarier, in a way it can be less scary because when you're face to face with them, it kind of humanizes you. You know, you're not just someone on the phone, you can't put a face to the name. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you're in person, I learned that it can be easier to make conversations if you think of it as a way to just honestly just help people get knowledge about you know the market right now things like that when you put yourself in the mindset of not selling something to someone and in the mindset of helping someone um, it makes it much easier so that's what i learned from that as well yeah Mm -hmm. so you talked about volume um tell me about like how empathy comes into play or like, you know, when it comes to, you know, you talked about script and that type of thing. And, you know, how is it that you go off script and actually find a way within your head to kind of help a family out? Yeah. So I think the main thing is asking questions Mm -hmm. asking about their situation and seeing where they are in life right now and what they need in order to get to their goals so i think that's um that's one thing i kept in mind is you know everyone has their story everyone has their wants and their dreams and goals and it's my job or our job to get those clients to their goals Mm -hmm. and so finding the pain points of um finding the pain points of why they can't reach their goals and seeing what they can do. For example, let's say a client, they can't um, get pre-approved for a loan because they have low credit score. You know, you're not going to walk away and be like, okay, I'm not going to help you anymore. You're going to give them, you're going to give them context or you're going to give them help to help them um, raise their credit score and things like that. So that when the time comes where they can get pre-approved, then they can get the home of their dreams. Um, But finding those issues and problems and pain that they're going through and giving them ways to relieve it or help them is a big thing yeah what you said there was powerful because questions are kind of the most valuable thing in any communication questions are so powerful and you know asking the right questions at the right time or in the right context is what really can change people's lives right Mm -hmm. and sometimes these questions spark a realization in people's lives to realize like hey i need a better sense of financial security or i need to get out of i i'm not realizing that i am renting and i keep thinking it's a short-term thing yeah but i just keep renting for years right and then if they don't and two a second thing is if they're not surrounded by people that are having those conversations of why um real estate is important or home ownership is important then they're not going to get that push or motivation Mm -hmm. so when a professional comes in and they give their insight or their input it helps a lot of people really open their minds and i've seen that very often it's really cool to see yeah Yeah. and 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 it does kind of it it is way more i see it within you like relatable now and you're helping clients and that type of thing and i think that connection it's really a natural thing for you because you've been through that you've seen clients be able to get financial security through what we offer and that type of thing so let's go back into you know starting at our company what was that like um what did you have to learn from there how how did you learn so quickly about everything that we do because it's only been a year in and you've had so much growth i think a big thing that I had to do here was fake it till you make it. (laughs) You know, I did have a lot of experience talking to clients, but in the real estate transaction side of things, honestly, I had close to zero knowledge. Uh And so just being thrown into the, the helping clients and helping with projects or things like that 
made me learn. And I'd say I'm a pretty fast learner. I can adapt well to things, but my way of learning is getting experience. And、um, so it was, a, it was great because that's how you guys taught me too, is just to throw me in. <laughs> yeah. And、um, yeah, and going through those experiences. Asking a lot of questions as well.、Um, anytime that I didn't have the answers to things like that, I always knew that I had the support of you know, you or the team to be able to get those answers, questions answered for them, which gave me that confidence because I didn't feel like it's just me,、um, me and them. It, I just I felt like I had the support of the team to be o r d e r to help them. And I feel like I was confident enough and Um, I'm, I think I did well as well、mm-hmm. um, with helping those clients, even though those were my first transactions. Yeah. Say. yeah. yeah. I, I think we talked about it on another podcast, but yeah, I put you guys deep into the transaction right away、mm-hmm. to get that real life muscle memory experience,、mm-hmm. right? And, and with that, it comes with the care that you have for them. Yeah. And that causes you to be resourceful in really figuring this out,、mm-hmm. right? And I think that's what's helped you grow. Yeah. Really quickly in this. Plus, you've had the context of actually living in a mobile home、mm-hmm. and, and that type of thing. So, a lot of this comes built in with you. Yeah.、Right? So. I feel like there's a lot of empathy that I have for all these clients as well. We,、um, if they're looking to sell their home, if they're looking to buy the, their home, I went through that with my mom.、Um, so, I understand. I can say I understand how they're feeling or what they went through because、mm-hmm. it was scary trying to purchase our mobile home back then, too, with just you know, my single mom looking to buy it with no experience and no agent at all.、Yeah. So, the fact that I can provide that service and that help to these clients、um, to avoid what my mom went through is really, is really amazing. Totally. And I think that comes down to like, you know, a lot, not a lot of people have this weird. Day. I, I always reflect on like people going through this day of maturity or, or independence in a way. And like some people go through it when they're、um, 20 or 30 years old, even. And some people go through it very early when they're put in a situation to have to have responsibility, right? And you're the older sibling, right? Yeah, I'm the so, eldest. So, and, and I find that with oldest siblings, sometimes you're forced to kind of be in charge and have responsibility.、Yeah. And. <clears throat> That allowed you to kind of mature and have that independence to understand all of this very early, right?、Mm-hmm. So that's really cool. So、um, tell me a bit about,、uh, we don't have to talk about the other stuff, but I, I, I'm excited to talk about your project with now you being able to support and help your mom's home. Yes. What's going on there? Yeah, so、um, just a little bit of context about the current mobile home that she owns. It's a 1971 or two, I believe. So when we purchased it, very old.、Um, inside there was turf on the floor, you know, the wood paneling, and not, not in great condition at all. And so we did have to spend a lot of money to get it into a livable, livable condition.、Mm-hmm. Um, but And this is just you and your mom? This is just me and my mom. Yeah. yeah. And your younger sister, right? Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of, we, it's kind of full wow, circle. Wow, that's so weird. <laughs> this is also me, my mom, and my younger sister. No. <laughs> that's <Sorry> . true. <laughs> <laughs> I just、yeah. connected that. And then <laughs> we're like the same zodiacs. <laughs> Franco and I have a lot in similarity. Oh man, I'm getting goosebumps. This is weird. <laughs> yeah. But、um, the, the reason why we had to move into this mobile home is because back then my mom and dad divorced. So she had to go and find you know, places for us to live on our own and things like that. And eventually she was able to buy that mobile home, which we were very grateful for. But it's gotten to a point now where、um, it, it is getting really hot during the summers. You know, there's a lot of termite damage. The roof, we never know when the roof might you know,、um, need to be repaired again. So that's a lot of money for her to be able to repair every now and then. So, you know, since working here and seeing that how achievable an upgrade can be, just by, you know, measuring our lots, seeing what can fit, and seeing,、um, yeah, seeing the things that we can do, we realized that. 
instead of thinking about moving into trying to save money to move into another single family home or move into a newer mobile home and having to go through that process again we could upgrade our home and it was just a thought before you know fantasizing about having a new nicer home things like that but it's now working here has gotten me into the position where i can actually that act that can actually become um a reality. Thing, a reality. Yeah. That's exciting. So you're yeah. designing the home mm -hmm. now and be going through with us building the homes that you've helped us build. You're kind yeah. of like, oh, I know exactly the it, home I want. It's really cool too <laughs> because, you know, I'm I'm becoming a nerd about mobile homes too. Yeah. <laughs> like knowing like going through, you know, building it from the ground and up. Or not the gun and up the factory and <laughs> the lot and up. <laughs> yeah, but we're not um, on site builders. We're, not on -site. We're, we're proudly factory built homes. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but knowing the whole process of things is really it's it's very fascinating to me. So to be able to help her from each step of the way, literally upgrading her home from removing the old home to having the new one there, is going to be really exciting for me um, because I can truly say that. I upgraded her home. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So cool. So that's an exciting journey. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's really cool seeing all the growth that you've done. Tell me a bit about kind of what is one of your favorite clients or favorite projects that you've worked on. Favorite clients, favorite project. They're all my favorite. <laughs> or what's one of the most They're, difficult projects that you've worked uh, on? Okay. So we've had... Or this I, one comes top of mind. Yeah, this one comes top of mind. So before I came here, there was two projects that were already here before me. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there it was mostly at a standstill for these projects. Um, but that was when I was learning about how to, um, how to help build the new homes as well so I didn't really understand what was going on um, but I was able to get us to a point where we were able to continue with the project and first on the problem yeah. for context is like a lot of issues happen in this park uh, COVID happened permitting happened people that had documents disappeared um, and what do you call it? The change of ownership in this park changed all in the middle of having two giant projects in this park. Yeah. We were building new construction and yeah, it was a really tough problem. We were at a loss and yeah. So yeah. you took on those projects, tackled it. Yeah. The person that was managing those here left as well so i had to take over the responsibility kind of with little to no context about it but we finally got to a point where we you know were able to manage the problems things like that to be able to close on the project so that one was probably the most difficult in the term and because there was a lot of times where we had to do stuff in a very strict timeline we had very strict timeline on us and being able to manage through those things well was difficult but rewarding yeah <laughs> it was so good time. yeah you dealt with working with the state with hcd yes. permitting with the park management and park ownership with the contractors exactly the setup. and and uh, Honestly, like I didn't know how to resolve it either, <laughs> but both of us were just tackling it day by day. Yes. And there were days where I was just, we didn't know, we didn't see the light. <laughs> no. <laughs> and we're ready is. to give up. <laughs> and then only like maybe two weeks ago, did both projects finally get yes. closed and executed? This was something that dragged on for so long. I think it was two years. Two years. Yeah. Yeah. And it was problematic, but you know, yeah. you got us through it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's I amazing. I think to touch back on like the no light thing, I think maybe three or four months ago, we were at a point where we genuinely thought that this couldn't happen. And yeah. so going through this taught me that, you know, even though at those moments it can feel very stressful, it can feel like nothing good is going to come ha come out of it. Um, finding different ways and having hope and just following up 
would is like the best thing you can do and then when we finally saw the light we just chased right after we're like <laughs> okay i'll be <laughs> right there <laughs> yes inspector you'll be there we'll show up 30 I'm minutes there. early what? what you need <laughs> i got it for you like an hour ago <laughs> exactly yeah so just really that mentality totally can get you through anything oh that's yeah. such a true point and being and i think having that grit in you know whether it's a startup company or whether it's building this and everything it's like people don't really know how to observe an opportunity and to take advantage of that opportunity and really take milk the availability of that as much as possible because i think it's that what do you call it that urgency mm -hmm. that drive that yeah. got both of us to kind of make this happen yeah. i don't know where that came from but <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, you know it's like i i realize with some people it's like opportunity think too much opportunity not taken yeah. right and mm -hmm. it's like whereas like that was something where it's like if we weren't ready at that time to close that we would not have gotten out of that no. hole <laughs> yeah so how about a client um that you've you know a family that you've helped that you're excited about yeah so i think a recent one we helped the sellers or you helped the seller size and i helped the buying side uh -huh. but on both sides it was very emotional um, yeah. for the families um, because it helped them a lot so first on the seller side do you want to touch on kind of the situation uh, we, uh, i think monterey oh, yeah. monterey oaks yes yeah. so we helped the seller they were in a financial bind they wanted to move out of state um they wanted to there's a home that they really want wanted to go to I mean, you helped me with this as well. Yeah. Um, and a lot of our team did help with this as well. But basically, they wanted to sell their home, buy a home at the same time. They had a lot of needs. It needed to be a double contingency. They needed to be able to structure it financially so that they can actually buy that home in Iowa. Sorry, I get my states mixed up. I don't know if it's Iowa, Idaho, or Kansas. <laughs> I thought it was, it's Ohio, Frank. Oh, it's Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> all right it's well, none of those three it was it's ohio, ohio. <laughs> it was ohio you're right yes but you know what was fortunate i, I know the agents and over there what's fortunate is i i know an agent that was there you know within our network that we vetted a ton of agents for yeah. her we interviewed them whatever and we found a really good agent that was out there that we were able to partner with yes um and basically through all of the issues that we had, we were able to get it to work out, yeah. right? And what's fascinating is that even before, you know, this this family was super stressful, super anxiety, mm. scared to make decisions. Yeah. Um, but because we have such a great network of buyers and that type of thing, we were able to, you were able to bring in a buyer that was willing to wait and be patient with this yes. transaction, which merited for her to be allowed to sell this home and be able to purchase all at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It was such a beautiful, I love these, in my eyes, I love complicated transactions. Simple yeah. transactions bore me. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> but where it's, are the issues? <laughs> <laughs> so it was such a beautiful thing to see all of that happen on the seller's end, right? Yeah. But you helped on the buyer side. What was that like? Yeah, so. Um, oh, and, and what's fascinating is this was a great win for the seller. And then with on Viv's side, it was a great win for the buyers too. Yeah, for sure. So these clients, there were three of them, a brother, a, a couple, and his brother. So they have been renting for a very long time. Um, and they finally, you know, saved up enough money to be able to pre-approve for a mobile home loan. And they had no idea about anything about mobile homes actually they've never even been inside of one but it was through our youtube actually that they were able to connect and contact us hmm. because something popped up on their feed where it was talking about um a first step into home ownership some some video um revolving around that so they reached out and i think it was really i love educating people whether it be about anything but it was really nice to educate them about mobile homes and giving them that high opening moment like are you sure like this is a thing um and then touring them in these homes they were like wow like i didn't know these homes look so nice inside i actually showed them 394 and 811 um 
too, just to give them an idea of, let's say they were to buy an older home or things like that. That's maybe a home that's not the, the newest. In the future, this is something that they can obtain. And they were absolutely wowed by that. And that's kind of what sold them into getting into buying a mobile home with, with me. So show them a few homes, show them Monterey Oaks, and it just, it was a perfect fit for them. Their family lives in the same park. They love to be near nature. So Monterey Oaks is gorgeous. You can see the like grassy hills from the park itself. Yeah. And they have dogs, so they love walking and hiking. So it was just honestly perfect for them. So I was able to, um, you know, work it out for um, making sure that they understood the situation of the sellers and us having to be patient but reassuring them that you know i'm gonna do my best to make sure things work out for them mm -hmm. so that was the situation and now they're moved in their dogs are happy they're having a great time living there so i'm really happy for them cool yeah love it so that's amazing mm -hmm. man well there's so many other stories we can touch on but we're short on time mm -hmm. i think that you know it's really cool to watch your journey through this and we can follow up to see how the progress of your your home projects your, your yeah, mom's mobile we're home definitely projects gonna are. have a video a vlog on that <laughs> <laughs> exactly and and we're aiming to get a lot of uh viv's presence on our youtube channel and stuff so if you haven't followed that definitely follow it um Thanks for being here and thanks all for watching. Have a good one. Later.